President Biden and Russian leader Vladimir Putin exchanged warnings during their nearly one hour phone call yesterday as tensions grow over the situation with Ukraine. Moscow requested the call. During the conversation, President Biden warned Putin that there would be serious costs if his troops invade Ukraine. Meanwhile, Putin threatened to completely sever ties with Washington if the U.S. imposes new sanctions. This as U.S. and Russian diplomats are scheduled to meet in Switzerland next month for more negotiations. And here to discuss all this is Sean Sullivan. He's a CBS News political contributor and White House reporter for The Washington Post. Sean, thanks for being with us on New Year's Eve. So what were your t main takeaways from yesterday's call between Biden and Putin? Are officials optimistic that this meeting will provide a diplomatic path forward in de-escalating some of these tensions over Ukraine? Well, Bradley, it didn't sound like this was a particularly warm conversation when you look at how it was described by both the U.S. side and the Russian side. It appeared to be a conversation where both sides were issuing warnings at the other and saying, look, if you take this step and escalate in this way, here is how we are going to respond. And so it remains to be seen whether or not a lot of these disagreements can be worked out uh, and a lot of these tensions will subside or whether they'll, they'll ratchet up. This meeting really left a lot of questions unanswered about what the path looks like in the next couple of weeks. What is Russia's intention when it comes to Ukraine? Are they going to proceed with a further invasion? How will the world respond? We've seen the United States say that it's going to take particular steps in response. Um, will it follow through on those steps? So really, we got more questions than answers, I think, coming out of this call yesterday. Sean, President Biden warned Mr. Putin that the U.S. will respond decisively if Russia invades Ukraine. But what retaliation options does the president have? And is that really enough pressure to persuade the Kremlin to pull back at the border? Well, the main pressure point that the United States government is talking about right now and has been emphasizing in the last couple of weeks here are economic sanctions. This is a step that the United States hopes will prompt Russia to say, OK, look, we don't want to suffer the economic consequences that would result from this. So we're going to pull back. We're not going to move ahead with a further invasion into Ukraine. There are other steps that the United States has talked about. Uh, in terms of helping Ukraine defend itself and uh, reinforcing NATO's presence. But really the main one uh, is these economic sanctions. And the way the Biden administration talks about it is, look, these are not just going to be sort of a slap on the wrist. These are going to be significant sanctions that, is gonna, that are going to cause significant problems economically for Russia. And so that's the main point right now of, of tension when you look at the next steps here, if, Russian do, if Russia does move ahead with the further incursion in Ukraine, the United States has said over and over again, we're, we're prepared to take these steps. And in this call yesterday, we didn't see them back down from that in any way. Sean, Putin has his own pressure points, too, of course. He threatened to completely sever relations with Washington. How serious could that be? Is it real? Well, if he's prepared to follow through on that, it would be a pretty significant realignment of the relationship across the globe right now. You know, you look at the countries that the United States has relationships with. Uh, there are some that are close allies that the United States relies upon to be close supporters. There are others where the relationship is more tense and Russia and China fall into that latter category. But if diplomatic talks completely broke down, if they weren't even able to have the kind of calls that uh, they had this month, including yesterday's call, then it, it could create some pretty seismic effects across the globe, both economically, geopolitically, and otherwise, because there's a lot of stuff that uh, Russia and the United States talk about, have to deal with, even though they are not the closest, warmest allies in a lot of ways, they do rely on having that open dialogue. And if that breaks down, then that would be a pretty significant escalation of, of where we stand right now. Sean, as you know, covering the White House, after a call like this, we typically get a readout, a summary afterwards. And White House officials offered a far more muted post-call readout compared to the Russians. So can you speak to some of the discrepancies between these two overviews? Yeah, it's interesting. When you look at the way the U.S. side described this, it was very general. And I think muted is exactly right. When you look at the way the Russian side talked about this, they were much more detailed. They did not hold back in describing uh, some of the severe sort of language that President Putin used in his conversation with President Biden. I think this comes back, at least on the U.S. side, to what seems to be uh, sort of uh, a strategy that we've seen over and over again from this administration, at least in the first year, which is that they don't want to ratchet up these tensions in public, whether it comes to China, whether it comes to Russia, 
whether it comes to other countries with which the United States has a tense relationship with. The Biden administration doesn't seem intent on sort of inflaming those tensions publicly, giving very detailed readouts of calls or points of disagreement. They, they tend to try to want to work this out publicly. Um, but on the other side, I think you see a Russian government that wants to show strength, that wants to show the world, look, I'm not backing down uh, against the United States. Here are the demands that we're putting forward. So you see two very different strategic approaches between what we see from the United States, what we see from Russia, not just, you know, geopolitically, but in the in the sort of, you know, what kind of face they want to present to the world. So it's very clear that the U.S. was not interested in, in using this call as a moment to sort of ratchet up tensions, which is why I think we saw this very general language. They weren't very specific at all about what was discussed. Um, and, um, you know, I think, as I said, I think it reflects the approaches, the very different approaches from both sides. And they're going to bring those different approaches to a meeting next month. They're scheduled to meet in Switzerland on January 10th. Russian officials, U.S. officials for more negotiations. Of course, President Biden and President Putin will not be present at that meeting. So how did this call sort of set the tone for it? Well, I think now and what we heard from the U.S. side yesterday is that they intend to go to allies and debrief them on what happened on this call. I think there are a lot of countries in the region and around the world that want to know what was discussed, what happened. Uh, so I think what we're going to see in the coming days is the U.S. sort of coordinate with its allies, say, hey, here's how the call went. Sure. But then in terms of these talks, there really is still a lot of uncertainty about what can happen. And it really is a matter of which side is, is willing to budge or is either side willing to budge. You have a Russian government that is very, very clear. It wants a security agreement that would prevent Ukraine from joining NATO. On the other side, you have the United States saying, hey, look, we are not going to be in the business of policing who can and can't join NATO in terms of independent countries. And so you have something of a stalemate there. And the question is, will we see any breakthroughs in these talks or will the stalemate continue? Will one side or the other be willing to give something? It's just really not clear at this point that either one is or, or what will happen. Sean, I know you'll be watching it. Thanks for being with us on New Year's Eve. Thanks.